searching the internet, looking to network and hitting the pavement. We've done the work to help you get ready for your next job. We've got the experts and the latest tips and we got you. This is Job Hunt New Mexico. Welcome once again to Job Hunt New Mexico. I'm your host, George Blaze. For the next 30 minutes, we'll not only talk about finding and landing a new job, but also perhaps give you some advice on how to advance and find success in your current career. Today, we're gonna to be focusing not only on the, what we usually talk about as far as finding jobs, but how we prepare the economic sector, how we get businesses in the area prepared to take on the workforce, how we connect the workforce and employers with what they each need from each other. Join me today, I'm very honored to have today Danielle Casey, President and CEO of AREA, the Albuquerque Regional Economic Alliance. Danielle, good morning and thank you so much for being with us today. Good morning, it's a pleasure to be invited. Absolutely great having you. And for those people who aren't familiar with AREA, uh, give us an overview of what AREA is and, and the work that you do. My pleasure. The Albuquerque Regional Economic Alliance, what, what I find fascinating is some folks still don't know about us, but we've actually been here for 60 years. We were formed out of an offshoot from the Metro Chamber of Commerce back in the 1960s when a group of business leaders decided they needed to focus on industrial development attraction and growing and adding new businesses into the market. So fast forward many decades ahead, I was very fortunate and lucky enough to be recruited after my wonderful predecessor reti retired. And I made my way here in 2020 for this role but on a daily basis, what AREA does as a 501c3 public charity that is 80% funded by private businesses contributing to our mission, we spend time going out and marketing our region. So we are selling Greater Albuquerque, which is the four county region, not just the city. And, uh, and we go out externally, market Albuquerque to uh, site selection consultants that are advising companies on where their next best home should be. We're marketing to companies. Uh, we'll, we'll soon be at trade shows talking to aerospace firms and biolife sciences firms and the like, and promoting the community when companies show an interest in our market, then we do a lot of deep dive research and data to show them how they can be successful here, how we compare to other communities, everything from the, the cost of labor for certain roles to helping them find the right industrial or office property. We do all of those things. And another big piece of the work we do is consistently visit local firms and companies to understand what their needs and challenges are and to make sure that they're accessing the resources available to them through our state and local partners. And if resources don't exist for their needs, that we are working on ideas and solutions to get them there. Well, you know, Danielle, I, I, you mentioned that you do a deep dive on providing all the data and information that private sector needs uh, to make great decisions about moving in, in, in and setting a home up here in the region, not the least of which of that data is the workforce. I know on, on your website there, you really, really praise what's available here as far as the workforce, perhaps the biggest and most important element for companies that are considering moving into the region. Tell me about uh, the local workforce. Who are they? What are they? And what makes them special and attractive to private sector? Absolutely. Great question. You know, our, our workforce is our biggest asset. Uh, we track different rankings of what corporate leaders and site selectors, again, those folks that are telling companies where they should locate, um, what their biggest factors are in choosing a new community. And you are absolutely right. Access to labor, availability of workforce, and or the future development of that workforce are number one and number two and have been consistently for years. So we do quite a few things. We work very, very closely with Central New Mexico Community College. We work very closely with UNM to help have conversations about the skills and, and needs that the workforce has today, but also in 10 years. What industries are the industries of the future that we wanna see coming here? We have really tremendous assets with the employment and the skill sets of the folks at Sandia National Labs and Lanel and at Kirtland Air Force Base, we'd like to keep more people that are retiring out of Kirtland staying here in the market. 
And then we also are, are really tremendously enriched, obviously, with folks that have called New Mexico home for generations and generations. And we are working to attract companies that are creating real career pathways for all members of the community uh, in ways that can be really sustainable and that can increase their quality of life in the community, which is part of our mission statement. You know, Danielle, in cities all across the region, across the country, really, um, there, there are, there's this issue with, with brain drain, where you have young people who are seeking opportunities outside of the small town or smaller city that they may have grew up in. And, and these communities in these regions are losing the talent that would otherwise be providing jobs in five to 10 years. Um, this, is, this is the heart and soul of why companies move and do things and stay planted in certain areas. Um, what are some of the opportunities, resources, or efforts being out there to make sure, particularly young people and, and kind of entry-level job people, are, are staying home, are staying in the Albuquerque region and know that there is a, an opportunity to build a, a, a family-sustaining career right here at home? Absolutely. Well, obviously, it starts to market. It starts with marketing to our own folks. I, I can't tell you how many times, you know, especially when young people are looking for, you know, their their first big adventure, that they very quickly overlook the resources in their backyard. So we are very supportive and strong partners with a number of the groups that I, I know you've, I'm sure you've talked to, thinking about future focus, sponsoring interns uh, through the county's program, working on all those opportunities. I think it's very, very critical for the business community can continue to build and create and nurture apprenticeships and internships in their organizations. But we've also done something very simple at area, which is host a curated job board. And the reason that's important, and it's on our website, it's free for employers to use, and it's free for candidates to look at. And what we love about this is these are roles that we have had to review and approve. It's not a um, you know, a, a questionable, you know, whether it's actually a real job or a posting or not, these are bona fide positions with employers that we know personally, and we're helping them promote those opportunities in the local community. But, but I will also say, just like any other market, I think we're happy to have newcomers as well and also promote those job opportunities to folks that are outside of our community or for those lovely UNM grads uh, out of the greater Albuquerque region that may be left for a few years to take a position. How can we lure them back home with those opportunities to have them take a second look? Um, a lot of times the grass isn't greener, especially nowhere but New Mexico. It's really a tremendous place to live and raise a family. Certainly, New Mexico has a storied history in terms of uh, aviation, uh, aero, aerospace, defense. Um, there's a lot of government work being done here and have been um, over a long period of time. We've seen how um, the space industry has changed from NASA running everything to private companies like SpaceX and others coming in and kind of filling the gaps and doing things more efficiently, doing things a, a, a different way. I would assume that aerospace is one of those things that are really exciting and one of those hot industries that you're really trying to not only potential workers, but also companies to come and be based right here. You're absolutely correct. Aerospace and defense has an unbelievable high propensity for growth in our market because of our existing industries and connections, but also the potential for spin out innovation in our community. There's some really wonderful in, uh, industrial developments underway. One of them is called Max-Q. It's right next to the Air Force Base. So it, it feeds off of that connectivity and innovation. The Sandia Science and Tech Park has seen local employers like Blue Halo continue to double down and grow in the community. So it's a, it's a tremendously strong industry. We also feel very, very excited about the future potential in the bio life sciences space because the, of the translatability in those skill sets. And, uh, and, and I'll add one more really amazing industry that folks may not think about every day, but has been getting a lot of visibility and headlines, which is renewable clean energy. It's a huge focus for our, our governor, for the administration, and really for the future of our state and market. And I believe New Mexico is emerging as a huge leader in uh, in innovation in renewable and clean energy and so hopefully we we become the unequivocal place to be for folks looking for careers in that field 
you know, Daniel, as I, as I kind of look over and glean uh, macroeconomic data, it, it's easy to be pessimistic across the board about what's going on here. But if, seriously, one of the things that must be done is that we have to move from outsourcing to insourcing. To, to the people right here can do a, a lot of the, the data jobs and the other jobs that we've been outsourcing for decades that clearly has led to a problem in terms of jobs and job growth right here uh, in the United States. And like, I think it goes back to what you were saying there, really paying a lot more attention to people who are at the university level, in our schools, and educating young people um, that not only does it help to have you know a really skilled technical uh, background, but also um, so for some young people, maybe going to college isn't the thing, but there are still tangible skills you have to offer these cutting edge industries. We could not possibly have enough people in the trades right now. So I would highly encourage them. There are amazing career pathways and there are really wonderful opportunities with great wages and benefits in companies coming to our market and growing all the time. So I, I completely echo that. Thinking about things like welding opportunities, we are working with a great company called Arcosa Wind Towers, which is in Berlin, and they are manufacturing wind turbines in the renewable energy sector. And if you don't have a welding certificate, I believe they're actually putting people through that coursework and training them up. So, you know, a great tip is look for an employer that's uh, that's seeking committed employees that will actually also then invest in you and train you at the same time. There are many out there. Well, and Danielle, this is, so, this is so great talking to you because, you know, it, it's easy to get really pessimistic when we discuss these kind of things, but <laughs> you're full of nothing but good news. We're going to talk more uh, a little bit about some good news. You've got some international accreditations that have come through. Sinalese has picked New Mexico. We'll talk a little bit about what that means for the region. Right now, just sit with me for a minute. We'll take a look at some job hunting tips. <laughs> Continuing our discussion today with Danielle Casey, President and CEO of AREA, the Albuquerque Regional Economic Alliance. Danielle, as I said in the last segment there, so much good news uh, in Albuquerque and across the Albu greater Albuquerque area. Um, recently, you had some great uh, premier status accreditation come from an international uh, body. Tell me about this accreditation, what it means and how important it is and where it puts the greater Albuquerque region on, on the global map. Thank you. We are very proud, as I mentioned to you earlier, we're an organization that's 60 years old, but in the last 20 years, the International Economic Development Council, which is the largest professional association for economic developers and economic development organizations globally, has created an accreditation process. So often like your university needs to be accredited to, to offer degrees that, that then you know, stand for people's professional certification, we also want to be peer reviewed to ensure that we are the best of the best and we do all of the things that a best in class and best practices economic development entity would do in any community that it's serving. So we, we applied, uh, so it's a very, very extensive and rigorous process. It requires applying and submitting a lot of material about, about your organization and then having that peer reviewed by industry professionals that have often been doing economic development work in other communities around the country for decades. So they will look at our marketing plan and our strategic plan, our makeup of our board of directors to ensure that we have a diverse makeup and, and inclusion in our investments and, and our partners. Um, 
looks at our policies and procedures and also the way we handle serving clients and, and serving in a, in a tra transparent way across our region. Um, if you don't have a really great marketing plan in place, and if you don't have all of those processes and procedures, they will turn you down and tell you to come back when you're a little bit more organized. We are very fortunate to have that peer review process completed last fall. And then the second phase of the process is they send out a peer review team to make sure that everything you submitted is accurate and most importantly, that you have community support and partners that are behind your work and also champions of economic development every day. Um, after all that's completed, they report back to a national review committee, which determines the accreditation. So I went on and on about that. I think what that tells you is we are really proud. It's a big deal. And, and I will add that um, I think why it matters for us is uh, it also gives us some feedback and ideas for how we can conti do continuous improvement that's critical. Don't ever think that you're doing everything perfectly. Continuous improvement is critical and getting that from third parties is very helpful, which they provided. But it also shows site selection consultants and, and uh, business selection experts for locations that they are going to be dealing with an organization working on economic development in a region that knows what it's doing, is going to treat them properly and work properly with their client, which, uh, which would mean you know, a business that's looking to locate in the community. To me, that is really the gold behind all of it for us. It's absolutely great news. Congratulations to all the efforts that everyone on your team has put together. It's a great thing to have and, and you, you should be acknowledged for that. So thank you so much thank for you. that. Great work. It's going to be more jobs here. And speaking of more jobs here, uh, anyone who sat back and is a fan uh, of the movies as I am and, and watch the Oscars and watch Oppenheimer sweep, uh, <laughs> lost kind of in the discussion of that, of the statuettes and actors and actresses, is the fact that New Mexico is the backdrop in the history of Oppenheimer in that movie and what it's all about. And what has happened here, Sinelis has picked New Mexico for a brand new expansion. Tell us about how important this is for uh, the film industry as well as for jobs here in New Mexico. I mean, how incredible and kudos to our state and all of the wonderful leaders that really kickstarted the film industry in New Mexico in a big way. Um, we do have some robust state incentive programs that have helped make that happen and make it possible. A I really, I love the Oppenheimer example because it's such a, a beautiful illustration of how the history and the rich culture and history of New Mexico that not everyone is really aware of and thinks about um, really has translated and, and connected to modern industry and activity. So Sinelis is gonna be building, I believe, you know, at least five new sound stages. It's, it's, a, it's a sizable investment. We are excited about this because they didn't have to come here. They chose New Mexico because our state partners on down to our local partners all made a strong case for why they should do their additional investment here and not in other markets, for example, like Georgia, which has a very, very strong film industry as well and would have been a competitor. So we're really proud of that. There have also been recent announcements that you've probably seen even further west out near Double Eagle 2 Airport along with the city um, working on some additional film studios there. So it's going to continue to grow and be robust. And it's really wonderful also to see our state and partners like Central New Mexico Community College working on things like schools and film schools right here in the heart of downtown Albuquerque to help train up. So just like you said before, in the trades and in the, in the arena of being in the movie business, we are also helping folks get the skills and experience and training they need to be successful in that industry right here in New Mexico. You know, Danielle, it really makes a huge difference because, you know, even as a you know, film buff myself, throughout history, some of the most iconic films, people don't even realize the backdrop are different places in New Mexico. It's the background of your favorite Western or other adventure film or what have you. But uh, the fact of the matter is you have film crews come in, they set up, they shoot, and then they leave. And a lot of that economic activity doesn't stay locally. Local vendors, local people, uh, craft services, people who support the entire film industry can't really get uh, their, their, their feet settled and really get a part and be a part of the economic growth that happens when a film comes in and just leaves. But now we're establishing a home which will build a whole network of other supportive services, small businesses, entrepreneurs that will feed, uh, that this will feed, this will be part of a whole system. 
Absolutely. So economic development geeks like myself love to talk about industry clusters, right? Um, so it's wonderful to build that cluster around it. So when you're talking about film and media, you're thinking about post-production, right? Um, post-production is going to require things like data centers and other processing power because there's so much information and data going on there. Um, we think about industry clusters as we talked about around aerospace and defense as we are, we are growing our a uh, space vehicle directorate, our directed energy directorate, what other ancillary suppliers and, and, uh, and, and industries are gonna be needed just to support that. We also every day are very excited about any base industry employer we bring and, and, and the way we um, define a base industry employer is any company that's creating a job for someone um, and the product created out of that job it, more of it is sent out of New Mexico than in. So it means we're bringing net new wealth into the community. What's beautiful about that is those net new wealth positions are the ones that then spend money in the community at restaurants and retailers and you know shops and local institutions and organizations. So that's how we also support Main Street and the really unique um, culture and activities we have here. And don't forget about the beauty of our, our tourism industry as well, which is a, a key component to economic development. I, and I, I'm glad that you brought that up because, you know, a lot of times when people think New Mexico, you know, as far as tourism, if they're not from New Mexico, you know, they, they show up, they go to Santa Fe, they go to Taos maybe <laughs> and do some things there and they forget about Albuquerque. And Albuquerque is, is kind of a hub for so many things. There's so much here and it's good that we have area uh, as part of the network, making sure that people recognize what's going on in Albuquerque as well as developing and making life better for people right here in Albuquerque. Um, in, in terms of, of, of of looking at creating jobs, people who are, well, okay, we've talked kind of about people finding jobs and where we're developing the economic growth, um, but what we haven't really spoken about is um, perhaps people who are looking to change careers, to move on, to mm. expand. Um, they may be like, you know, I've established myself in the corporate sector here in New Mexico for so long, I'm looking for a change, maybe I'm gonna go out west, maybe I'll head out east. Um, let's talk about developing and keeping talent and, you know, kind of doing the headhunting of making sure that people from uh, greater Albuquerque who have this breadth of experience, uh, life experience and work experience are really talented, that we keep them in industries here in the greater Albuquerque area. Absolutely critical. You know, we, we see it every day whenever I hear about someone here potentially looking at a role in another market. I go, no, 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 wait. Um, what, what I think is so tremendous about our community is our high level of connectivity. So I would, I would certainly highly encourage, we have done so and we continue to do so, encourage networking and getting connected in the market. There are amazing young professionals groups. There are amazing leadership groups. I'd, I'd love to advocate for trying to get involved in Leadership New Mexico or any other volunteering activity. One of the things that I've, I've, I've done in, in my past career, and we, we, we are uh, open to supporting any business, especially when they're entering the market, is to get to know the folks at the company and at the business and make sure their employees are integrated into the community. The more that happens, I believe, the less likely they are to leave and the more likely they are to also have a strong network where they can find future growth opportunities. Um, every market has a shortage of workforce right now. So I, at least from the experiences I've seen, watching people grow and, and flourish, um, it, it, it is an, a, a, a a worker's market right now in terms of opportunities. So uh, take advantage of that, but please do network. And if you are anyone in the community running into someone or meeting anyone, it's amazing, even if it's a complete stranger, what more connectivity to the community can mean on a daily basis. We are going to be continuing to work on talent attraction and retention initiatives and efforts through our network with area, we have several industry advisory councils. And one of those is gonna be very, very focused over the next 12 months on what we can do to support our businesses in connecting to talent in the community and developing talent. And we you know, keep still talking about, there will always be a measure of, of needing and wanting to attract people in with skill sets, nothing wrong with that. And we've actually developed a landing page website for that purpose it's live.abq.org. 
So anyone that is new to town or doesn't really know or is thinking about coming here or that has been here for a couple of years, you know, maybe maybe they're a trailing spouse and they're trying to decide what they want to do after retirement out of Kirtland, as the example I provided earlier. Live.abq.org has information on communities and neighborhoods and education and healthcare and resources around the region. It's designed to speak to an employee, not a company making a site selection decision. And, and we are looking to all of our partners across the region and state to provide input on how we can continue to advance that tool and resource, which we do promote nationally. Well, Danielle, you know, speaking of attracting talent, certainly they made the right decision when they brought you on board because you you have it all together and you have it all figured out. You're doing such great things. Congratulations to you and your entire team over there. And thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you. Whether you're looking for a new job or perhaps looking to expand or move on in your current career, know that the greater Albuquerque area has it together. The Albuquerque Regional Economic Alliance is out there doing work to make sure companies and employees come together in a great way and stay right here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week right here on Job Hunt New Mexico.